all around amazing chassis. Big fan of this thing. <laughs> Hello people on the other side of a screen to your favorite shop dwelling Sarah here with another car review. And today I have the all new 2022 BMW 230i with the M Sport performance package. And this is actually the first BMW I've ever reviewed on this channel. A lot of you have requested that I do so. So here you go. Here's your first one. Let's get this thing up in the air and take a look underneath. Getting off to a good start right there. BMW knows how to make a proper lift point. Well, that's interesting. The rear diffuser, the center portion of it comes off. It's not all one integrated piece of plastic. Neat. Oh, it does have active exhaust. Only on the, what? Get down from there. It's only on the passenger side tip though, that it has a valve. Interesting, that's a really fancy looking rear muffler as well. All stainless steel construction. That thing's beefy. That's a girthy exhaust. Look at, oh, I like the way that it gets wider right there and they don't just crimp it underneath the rear subframe. Also very interesting how it has this little winglet just to diffuse air over the muffler. Another winglet here on the lower control arms. This utilizes a five link rear suspension, multi-link. And uh, everything back here is steel construction. That is an adorable little spring. How small are you? So cute. Everything back here is really nice though. Huh. They do undercoat their cars. They don't use that hot wax injection process like Audi Volkswagen Group uses. Ah, that's pretty interesting. It's rubber. Probably something to do with sound resonance. Super weird, but I'm sure someone quite intelligent and designed that. This tour is equipped with a dynamic handling package, or as I called it, the M Sport package. And it does include this M Sport rear differential, which is capable of torque vectoring left to right up to 100%. Also includes some other things I'll touch on here in a second. My hair just got caught in that. <laughs> I just lost some hairs. Also, interesting to see that they use steel instead of aluminum for the rear diff. It must be nice and beefy. A little sensor. I wonder if that's for temperature or fluid level. Since BMW doesn't publish it, I'm curious what the diameter of their rear anti-sway bar is. So I'm gonna measure myself. 18 mil on the dot. The entire underside of the 230i is a nice slick flat floor of plastic down here to keep this thing nice and slick and aerodynamic, as well as some aluminum bracing down here to keep it nice and stiff. No wonder this thing is so fun to drive. Look at all this bracing down here. It's rugged too. I'm impressed so far with this new BMW. This is crazy. Is this part of the subframe? No, is it just like a brace under the back of the transmission? That is that is wild. A little ground strap right here. Yep, can't really see much past the downpipe. It's pretty tight quarters in there. Lifetime oil, that I will argue with an engineer on. I feel that solely depends on the type of buyer. I feel for your average consumer that lifetime fluid makes sense, especially if you're the type of person who's just gonna trade the car in after a few years. But if you're gonna buy this thing and track it and drive it aggressively, mm-mm. I just, I can't agree with it. Yeah, look at that big ass caliper, part of that dynamic handling package. Everything up here on this McPherson Strut South front suspension is aluminum. Got a dual ball joint set up down here. Even the dust shield is made out of aluminum. Don't have to worry about those rusting and corroding out on you. What is, come on, what is this? It's like cardboard. Everything back here is plastic. Oh no, it's not. That's plastic. That, oh, that's just like a cardboard. Hmm. As far as the transmission goes in this 230i, it is the ZF8 HP eight-speed automatic transmission. Absolute gem when paired to this two liter turbo four cylinder. And uh, there is no manual transmission available on the 230i.
time for the braking test on damp surface. No one behind me. Here it goes. Ooh, very nice. Very nice. No drama whatsoever. A lot of pedal feedback, but it stayed straight. No issues, still stopped relatively short distance. A lot of that has to do with the tires, but great job. Nice brakes. Bringing this 3,519 pound coupe to a stop was accomplished with the dynamic handling packs four piston front brakes. And the rotors, I could not find any technical specs on these online everywhere I looked, but I did measure the rotor myself and it came out to 355 millimeters or 14 inches. It also has a staggered set of 19 inch M Sport wheels. They're matte black with a machine face. It's a 19 by eight in the front with a 225 40 19 inch Pirelli P0 tire. And in the rear, you got a slightly wider 19 by eight inch wheel wrapped in a 255 40 19 inch tire and as far as brakes go it's a single pot caliper with the rotor i measured it three times and kept getting 355 millimeters so it's the same as the front and that's because it has the parking brake on the inner drum portion which makes it larger matching the front size diameter i would give it a five to ten percent error rate though on my measuring method because it's kind of hard with the wheel on there in the name of science i am now going to give this thing the beans as far as drive modes go I have multiple ones, starting with Eco, which gives you two options inside Eco. You have Eco and Individual, which you can then go further configure how you want it to be Eco. You have Comfort, which there's just standard. You can only be comfy one way. And then Sport. Sport gives you Sport, Sport Plus, and then Sport Individual, which you can configure as you like. I'm going to leave it in Sport Plus. And then, oh, it's wet out. I like having fun. We'll turn off dynamic traction control. <laughs> and this also has launch control, which is nice. Move the shifter over into sport and then let this thing eat. Ready? Launch control active. Oh yeah, it is. Good job, even though it's wet out. It hooked up pretty good, that's good. This thing's quick. great considering this is the entry model. So good. I know an M2 would be amazing, but I mean, don't discredit this thing just because it's only the 230. Where are you? Double pop. Are you a light hood or are you a heavy hood? Uh, dual hood latches. One, two. I also just noticed that the headlight housing has some gold on the inside of it like an Iron Man vibe with this color scheme. That's pretty wild on the side of the headlight. It looks like biomechanical almost. I'm imagining that's some sort of a heat exchanger for these headlights. Hello, Garage Science welcomes you. <laughs> Under the hood, <laughs> that's singing. This 2022 BMW 230i is the B48B20. It is an all aluminum, dual overhead cam, 16 valve, two liter turbocharged four cylinder with direct injection that produces 255 horsepower at 5,000 to 6,500 RPM and 294 pound-feet of torque from 1,550 to 4,400 RPM. It's a very specific wedge of torque right there. It's actually not a wedge, cheese. Cheese wedge, cheese wedges are pretty tasty. The other kind of wedgies suck. While it may not be a straight six like the M240i or the M2, don't discredit this little B48. It does have a forged crank, forged connecting rods, cast pistons, and also has no port injection to help with washing the back of the valves. It's direct injection only. This B48 is an undersquared engine. It has an 82 by 94.6 millimeter bore in stroke. It is similar to the B48 that is found in the four cylinder version of the Supra, which I did a review on as a link up above if you want to check that out. It does have an integrated exhaust manifold down here that the little twin scroll turbo is attached to. There's actually a ton of room in this engine bay. You can't really tell with all the plastic everywhere, but it doesn't look like it'd be that hard to work on. Now I didn't see a front mount intercooler on the front of this thing, so I suspect that this has a water to air charge cooler 
on the top of the engine. We shall have to see. Yep, right there. Water to air charge cooler on the side of the cylinder head. Got plastic valve cover on there. It is cambered a little bit off to one side. That's something BMW has done forever on their engines. Also something I found highly interesting when I was doing my research on this engine before filming the review, this has a split cooling system for the engine itself. The engine block itself can be completely divorced from the rest of the cooling system, which aids in faster engine warm-up times. Ooh, that snaps in nice. A lot of manufacturers mess that up. So check this out. Obviously, because the hinges and the hood strut have to go down into somewhere, underneath the plastic right here by your wiper cowl, there's actually a little hidden compartment down here that you could fit a whole ass rabbit in, like a, a big rabbit, a Texas rabbit. wind buffeting. Oh, that's not pleasant. It's a little bit like the Supra in that instance, the sound just kind of bouncing in your ears. Speaking of sound, now there is some fake sound generation in the cabin and I don't really mind it because of the fact that it's not trying to make it sound like it's got a different number of cylinders, kind of like the Golf R. I'm sorry, but it almost sounded like the sound generation was making it sound like a VR6 in there. Although I liked the sound of it. I don't think this sounds bad either. It's not as video gamey as it could be, so that's a plus. And personally, I like the idea of a four cylinder in a two series. I just, I think it fits because it's, it's the baby coupe of the model lineup. I kind of wish they had a like high horsepower four cylinder version for the M2, like AMG CLA. That'd be kind of fun. Now, as far as the inside of this car goes, other than the color choice on the seats, it's nice in here. I like the style of the screen in the center for the infotainment system and the gauges are absolute fire. I like how the tack and the speedometer on the outside are the shape of the kidney grill in the front of the car. That's clever. And it's got the navigation map just kind of blended into the center there. It's all digital display. There's plenty of tech features on this thing for being a 230 everything in here that I would really need on a car. I did drive the previous generation 135i and loved that car. I actually almost bought one when I was stationed in Germany in the Air Force. Looks wise of this new designed 2 Series, love it. I love the way this car looks. I even like the two-tone effect that this one has. I don't know, I'm just a sucker for two-tone cars. The taillights, how it has the black plastic built into the lens kind of hit or miss on that for me but I love the way that they illuminate just nice vivid LED in there it's really bright stands out the fact that the headlights have the gold in them that's cool performance wise this smile absolute smile driving this car I can't really show because I'm obviously not on a racetrack but this car is very flickable it has lots of play to it in a good way it's fun it's an enjoyable car to get crazy with the cheese whiz. It's just all around amazing chassis. Big fan of this thing. Fuel economy wise for how quick this thing is and what it weighs, I think it gets fairly decent. And competitor wise, there's all kinds of things you could compare this against for the price point. I mean, the fact that this thing starts in the 30s makes it really appealing. You could compare it against an STI or a Civic Type R, which is a front wheel drive, an all wheel drive, and a rear wheel drive car, which I think are all equally as fun in different ways. They all have their own unique abilities and they're all about the same price. So, so happy this car exists. And I think it's a great option as long as you don't start going too crazy and spec it out near the price of an M2. So if you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them, starting with the bean score. It has a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get behind your belly button when you give it to those beans. And this 22 230i, that's a lot of twos, is getting a rating of two beans. So many twos. This thing is quick. Do not discredit it just because it is the lowest model in the lineup. And for your money, I think there's a good bang for the buck right there with the 230. 
Next up is the cookie score. It is assessment of value on a one to five cookie scale, five being the best value possible. And this car, as it is equipped, is getting a rating of 4.1 out of five. It's excellent value. You can get to trouble though when you start adding options to it. So I would just get the no charge paint color and I would delete that hole in the roof, which saves you almost a grand. So absolutely worth deleting the sunroof if you don't plan on using one of those. Uh, the brakes, that's definitely worth it. I would keep the dynamic handling package. Next is the mechanic score. It is a rating of one to five wrenches based on how difficult a vehicle would be to work on. One being abysmal, five being super easy to work on. And this 230i is getting a rating of 3.2 out of five. It's a fairly simple recipe. It's a rear wheel drive turbo four cylinder. Uh, the fact that it does have some tech features on there as well as it doesn't have a three pedal traditional manual transmission uh, keeps the score from going any higher. But I don't know, I wouldn't mind working on that thing. Actually, I think it'd be kind of fun as a project car. Lastly though is the Penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And that little two series right there, is getting a rating of 4.4 out of five penguins. I really like this car. I especially enjoy it when an entry model car is good. And this one is pretty much about as good as it gets for an entry model being a complete win in my book. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.